All right, one more was done. I did kind of want to go over a handful of other things. Uh, let's do. Let's go ahead and hit the U key, please. Now we're just going to do a drill here. Uh, I just want everyone to. We're going to spawn into the Rexcom substation, but there's no. There's not really any enemies here. I, I just want to go over something. So let's spawn into the Rexcom substation. Just hey, just spawn in and uh, just stay in the spawn room for right now. Make sure we get the full squad in. Alright, so briefly, I'm gonna try to summarize a couple of the things we've been going over to Martin. Uh, awesome. Mar Martin, for advanced squad leading, what, what we're going over is we're going over adding another administrative level to the squad, which is just to actually using your fire teams. So we're going over how to use fire team diamonds and hearts as two basically mini squads of six. So you have Ooh. you have you have your primary squad lead, which is me in this case of Alpha Squad, and I am the 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 fire team lead for diamonds. And then Niku Piku is the ASL or the assistant squad lead for hearts. So whenever I give a directive for diamonds to do something or hearts to do something, that's just giving a directive to six people rather than twelve. So you don't have to put, you know, an overkill on any on objective. And it also gives you a little bit more tactical flexibility in a battle. For instance, we just uh, attacked Cobalt Comms, and in the triple stack, I put hearts on one uh, stairwell going down and diamonds on the other stairwell going. down. And it's, it's not anything you wouldn't normally do anyway, it's just adding a little bit more clarity to your who is doing what. I'm in your debt. So, with that in mind, we are going to uh, go over something that I'm just going to go ahead and just call sequencing uh, a crash. So in a lot of instances, especially with a squad, you're not going to necessarily have the critical mass to crash a point. But what you can do is put simultaneous pressure on a point. So let's pretend our Rexicom is under attack right now, and we only have 12 people, odds are 50-50. What we're going to do is we're going to sequence the attack on a broader front rather than crashing with uh, superior numbers that we do not have. So I want Fireteam Hearts to take the teleporter, and Fireteam Diamonds to stay in the main squad room. Now Hearts, once you go through the teleporter, do not leave that, that spawn room yet. We're going to sequence the attack together. So Fireteam Diamonds, come to me. Fireteam Hearts, just go ahead and organize around Niku. When I do the all call, we're going to go together. Alright, in five seconds, I want both fire teams to move out onto the A point. Niku, your uh, fire team's goal is going to be that building on top of the hill. My fire team's going to snake around and hit A from the flank. So everyone, go, go, go. Go, go, go. Alright, everyone, just follow me, follow me. At this point, we would devolve down into fire team comms. Niku would explain, stay on me, stay on me. I'm going to go into fire teams right now. All right, we're going around. We're going to snake around the other side of the A point. The other fire team is going to take the hearts thing, the hearts waypoint, and we are just going to hit A point itself. And, and there we go. See, now both fire teams hit their objective more or less at the same time. Uh... Diamonds is on the A point while Hearts is now taking control of the uh, hill building looking down to support us on the A point This is kind of what I'm talking about with a lot of the stuff is you don't want to put your fire teams too far away You want to put them far enough to where they are doing another job, but close enough to where we can support each other Hearts if 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 Hearts had had some trouble taking that A point or taking that building it might have taken people off of A point so that Diamonds can take the A point, and vice versa. If Diamonds was having trouble taking the A point, people probably would have come down to the building to the sound of the fighting, giving Hearts a better chance of taking the building. It all kind of feeds off of each other, and this kind of simultaneous crash on a broader front can be used but with a smaller number of people to try to put pressure everywhere. If we hit them... At two separate points on, on the, in a pretty wide front, we will find wherever the cracks in their armor are and slip through it. Just kind of buckle them like pretty quickly, or it might take a couple pushes, but you can do it like this. Does anyone have any questions? 
Oh, no questions? Okay. So, the only other thing, and we're, this, we're just going to go into talking. We're wrapping up right now. So, everyone just come up here to the top of the hill. One of the things I just wanted to, to talk about was just the modularity of this type of system. Like, uh, it might seem simple, but there are some pretty interesting things that you can do when you really think about it. It's like an anvil. Uh, you think, oh, I can drop down a mag rider, but then you think, wait a second, I can drop down a sunderer, and there's a lot of weird places that an anvil can come down to, to deploy a sunderer that you can't drive a sunderer. And it, it gets your mind going, and it makes you kind of experiment. So this is the this is also is a kind of thing that seems simple on the surface, but there's a lot of experimentation that you with it. Someone get be horned. Um, one of the one of the big things that for any of you people that are in the air academy or 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 or, or are interested in air armor or anything like that is that if your squad is ghost capping, like say like this base, maybe, maybe we're attacking it. And there's no one here. You can put. Fire team hearts in the, in the air or in armor or something like that, and just have them kind of get ready to once the base caps, everyone just uh, diamonds is on point. Uh, the, we then cap the base. Diamonds goes gets in hearts as armor that they already have ready, and then we rev up and move on to McCall Auxiliary, or we go down to Rex's firearms or whatever like that. There's a lot of modularity you can add to it to where it would just be in a in a regular squad in a regular platoon, it would just be too clunky to say I need some of you to pull Sundays because then one person might pull a Sunday or nine people might go off to pull a Sunday. In this situation it's just they have a lot of air cover. We're not really needed on the ground. Why don't we just do hearts, go get in scythes. Go clear off their air. Diamonds, we're just going to point hold here. And then once the air is cleared off, we'll kind of unify the squads again to maybe get in their Valkyries or they can just go ahead and clear out the air of the next place that we're going. There's a lot of uh, modularity to it. And once you really kind of like get a feel for the system and get get an idea of what the fire teams can do, it, it's actually pretty interesting. Um I would just not advise you all to treat them like squads. Like, this is not a system where I would say send Fireteam Hearts to go Ghost Cap a base and then send Fireteam Diamonds to go Ghost Cap a different base. You don't want to split up your squads that much. You want to keep the squad together, but this system just keeps them... You can stretch them a little further apart without it being uh, an incohesive mess. Instead of being one squad of 12 that kind of has to stick together, you're now two squads of six that are supporting each other, staying within the lifeline of each other. But, oh, I can actually hear. Yeah, I heard you that time. Cool. I'm going to do an all call, so if you want to help take out this bastion, we're going to start forming up the warp gate. It's time to end this thing. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this the training here. I think you all get the idea behind this. Uh, does anyone have any questions either about this training or just any any questions in general? We can go into a brief Q&A. Actually, I do have a question. How would you apply this modular system if you're running an entire platoon? If you run an entire platoon, that's not something um, I would, I or would more use. More specifically, if you're the platoon leader and you want your... Say Alpha Squad to actually do something productive. <laughs> well, uh, here's the interesting thing, and I'm glad you brought this up. Let's say, uh, let's say I'm platoon lead. Medic here. Let me uh, a look. I might set up an Alpha Squad because you know most of you all, when you platoon lead, are a squad lead as well. Just that way you can stay in uh, command chat and stuff like that. Yes, um, do the features. Yeah, do the. Fe but the interesting thing about this system is that if you find someone you can trust, for instance, uh, Horace. I've known Horus a long time, and, and many of you are friends or, or trust your other brood lords or hive lords or swarm lords. You can put, let, let's say in this situation, I'm the platoon lead. I'm, I'm not just alpha squad lead, I'm the platoon lead. Niku Piku is my ASL. I might tell Niku Piku, you are basically alpha squad lead. And I and flip the script. I might I, I might say, as the platoon lead, go here, and but I am going to operate as the ASL for Niku because I'm trying to look at the map. I don't have as much time to lead the squad on the ground as, as I would like because I'm also trying to coordinate the platoon. So in this instance, I just give up. I, be, I, I keep the squad lead position, but I give up. Uh, the shot calling to someone who has more time to do it. So in this instance, I would say Niku Piku or Horus, whoever is my ASL, 
I, w I want you to direct the squad. I am just going to act, act as your AFL and basically just flip the script. So you can totally do that, and you will have a lot more success because you can just follow your squad lead's directives, uh, talk to your fire team on occasion, kind of you know yo-yo between your squads, but it gives you more time to look at the map and, and kind of direct the platoon. Which myself, I have tried giving squad lead to people with, while being platoon lead to people just get very confused. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's definitely not something that uh, is simple. Uh, it, it, it needs to be someone that you trust, someone that's also like an authority figure. Like I said, like, I've known Horace a long time. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eye to just say, Horace, like, I know I'm the squad lead, but can you, you know, talk in squad chat more than me and I give directives and I'll just reinforce what you're doing tactically with my in my fire team while i am doing the strategic planning because that, that is the difference between strat, uh, strategy and tactics in this the platoon leader is is enacting strategy the, the platoon leader is looking at the map deciding what bases to be at but once you get to the base how to take the base is tactics and the squad leaders need to focus more on the tactics while the platoon lead focuses more on the strategy and if you just can't do both as a platoon lead, and, and believe me, I don't blame you, then just ask someone that you trust to give to basically be your voice to your squad while you focus on the bigger picture. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind. Alright, any other questions? It doesn't have to be about this. If anyone just has any general questions, I'm also here. We can, we can talk for five or ten more minutes. Um, I crafted an, an OS. I think I didn't mistake. I should have pulled, uh, created a bastion piece. Sorry about that. Well, let me check. Yeah, there is no S building. Oh, uh, man. We don't need a bastion piece. It's, the bastion's already made. So you're good. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could have made one if you wanted to. Well, we already have a bastion in the bank. Alright, any other questions? Or comments? Roseanne, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording here, and I'm going to go um, get doing other things, but thanks for the uh, training, it was really awesome. Yeah, thank yeah. you.